Farmer's Diary. My name is Senyana Zomchiza and I'm your host for the show, The Farmer's Diary. Today we are back here in Guero where we are at Mr. Philip Reed's farm. We're doing a follow-up on the previous video that we did with him. And today we're going to be checking out how he does his artificial insemination and checking out those, the, the, the few kettle that he's going to be inseminating on. So he is going to be taking us through the whole process from start from the beginning to the end. So Mr. Reed, welcome to the show. Thank you so much and thank you for coming back again. So do watch the video and learn a lot if you want to improve your breed and if you want to increase your cattle head, this is the video to watch. What we like to do is, uh, as I said in the previous video, we like to carve our cattle down from about July through to September and then we try and get them pregnant about two months after calving. Uh, we, we, the very best cows come on, on heat naturally and we've had half a dozen or so come on already but today we are going to synchronize five cows that haven't come on heat and by synchronize I mean we are going to show you the process now we do this but this process is not for everybody. We are still breeders and this is quite an expensive way to do it. First of all, this is called a Q-mate, comes in from Australia um, and these are called pods and they are charged with progesterone. We will insert this into the cow, we'll show you how we do it. Um, and when we insert it into the cow, we will give two mils of this drug. Basically, it's called Sidorol. Then this Qmate will remain in the cow for exactly a week. So if we do it on today's Wednesday, if we do it on Wednesday today, Wednesday next week, we will remove this Qmate from the cow. And on removal, we will then inject two mils of Estromate. The following day, i.e. on Thursday next week, we will then give another one mil of Sidorol and we will then place, this is called an Estrotect sticker, onto the tail uh, on the back of the cow, right at the back, so that when it comes on heat, the other cows that climb on top of it will scratch this and by scratching this it becomes uh, a, a luminous orange color. That is an indicator that the animal has come on heat. So if I scratch this quickly, this is what the other cows will be doing to the... You can see there how it's becoming orange there. That will indicate that the cow has come on heat. So last week, Monday, we, we did this process to 12 cows.
we showed you what we do to bring the cow into heat. Uh, currently today, we did that to 12, uh, we did it to five cows this morning, but a week ago we started the program with 12 other cows. They are all on heat at the moment, and we will bring through a few cows now to show you how we do the AI process. Uh, it's, it's quite a technical thing, and it's worth using proper professionals to to do this because you have to maintain proper temperatures. Um, it is quite a technical thing, and it's not for everybody. The main reason for for myself to do AI is to be able to introduce new bloodlines into my pedigree herds. So if someone buys a bull from me. When they need another bull, I can say to them, yes, I've got other bloodlines to offer you now. If I keep using the same bull all the time for two, three years, then I'm going to lose those customers. So that's why we like to introduce new bloodlines. And by, going, uh, by doing artificial insemination, we can use some very high-valued bulls, $20,000, $30,000, $40,000 dollar bulls, we buy the semen for fifty to hundred dollars per straw, and we can introduce those top, top proven genetics into our herd. Um, as I say, it's not for everyone, but this is what we do. Uh, we try to do it to every cow on the farm, and if they don't take on the first attempt, then we usually uh, let our bulls uh, back up our AI program. The success rate ranges from 30 to 40 percent only. Please do not think you do AI and you're going to get a hundred percent take. The, the bull is way better than, than what we can do. That's more natural and AI is, 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 is actually quite difficult. So out of the 12 cows we do today, if I get five, I'll be extremely happy. If I get five and calf today, I'll be extremely happy. Maybe in three weeks' time, when they recycle, because we missed them today, hopefully we can get three out of the remaining six. And then the other three will have to go to the bull after that. So, yeah, have a look as we go through this process and, and see what we do. All right, so Mr. Reed, I understand there are certain temperatures that are required when transporting um, artificial insemination, the injections, the chemicals and everything involved. So take us through that whole journey, the transportation and the storage of AI equipment. Okay, uh, when the semen is drawn from a bull, uh, it gets put into liquid nitrogen. Liquid nitrogen is minus 196 degrees Celsius. If you were to have liquid nitrogen touch you on your skin, it would burn you as bad as fire can burn you. So it's extremely cold and the semen has to remain in that liquid nitrogen until the day you use it. So we are about to use it. So we will remove a straw shortly from there and we will place it into this unit here. This unit here is heating the water temperature up to about 35 and a half to 36 and a half degrees Celsius. That is body temperature of the cow. So we heat the semen up for about 20 seconds. We will then place it into one of these, uh, it, it is called a pistolet. Um, and we, we put a plastic straw covering over the top. We then put the semen inside. From there we'll go to the cow and put it into the cow. We are inseminating the cow 12 hours after it came onto standing heat. So we are 12 hours after the bull would have covered the, the cow when she came onto heat. If a bull were to come to this cow now, she would not stand there and wait for the bull to mount her. She's past that stage. And what has happened is 12 hours ago when she was on standing heat, she, she released her egg which will travel down into the uterus. We then put the semen, hopefully, right up against the egg that has taken 12 hours to travel down into the uterus. 
And as I say, the percentage is about 30-40%. Um, you can get lucky and get 60%, but that's not likely. So, well, we haven't had that success before. Um, so, and I think we do do it correctly. So, yeah, we will now demonstrate how all this happens. All right, so there are some other farmers who might be interested in this artificial insemination program. They might want to contact you regarding it. Are you comfortable giving, the, giving out this service to other farmers or you would prefer a stakeholder or a certain company to do it on your behalf? Um, I, would, I personally wouldn't be able to do it. I, I don't have the time, but I believe there is a, a company that can do that for you. We're happy to help and advise. But to physically come out to your farm, I can't do that. Monte Cade, everybody eat. The Nay Pangova, the Valadi, twelve to eighteen hours. Boost him in anger in Mutras, Ibudim Cat. Labour hours, I have put out boost him, noted as a boost him in Mukat is a jabul. Snora would be pining girls, would have boost him and no good some day and then there's some cat. The chain I pop into the Sandadaro, the end of a month, the Fanagono root, Mom Pistol, the Tianguia Pinda in Absina, no Fanopin de Gachina. We are Zendabata Romoshbere, the Fanopin de Marines Matat, Pamarins Matat, Dopando and Louis and Bay. We are the Zos, Rauti, Simon and Lenda to Isam Muchi Berebuchemonde, on the Nufanoti Batazam. Uh, see that smoke there? That's PKH2, eh? And the green one. So, this is the semen there in liquid nitrogen. We take it out. That is one straw of semen. We then place it into the warm water. It'll be there 20 seconds or so. Jack is warming up his pistolette. So, it it is also warm. If you put that warm onto that cold like that, it can kill semen. So you're having less chance of being successful. You can imagine if we were doing this when it was eight, eight degrees outside or something, it would be very cold now. And, and that different temperature shock will kill the semen. semen. Yeah. That means it'll be a huge loss for you. Yeah. So now he's just cutting off the end. So that's the semen is in that thing there. He puts that thing like that. This is like a protector so that we don't pass like a condom really. And then I keep this under my arm like this. Because I'm at 36 degrees Celsius. So I'm keeping the semen warm. Like I can say if it was 8 degrees or it was cold and you're doing it in winter and you had it out now, the temperature drop would start to kill the semen in there. We've worked it, it's been here for many years. We've now woken them up. So he puts his hand up the rectum. And then you put this into the vulva. I then Break that plastic seal. Uh, I think you're right. The messy job. She's behaving very nicely so far. Now he's trying to find his way through the cervix. Now hopefully he's up against the egg and now he pushes all the semen into that cow. Then he, he stimulates the cow which produces a hormone which helps make the... Okay, so she's now done. 
Once we've inseminated, we come here and we record the cow and the bull that we use. I'll go one step further and I actually keep the actual straw. And here we've recorded the date, the cow and the bull. Then when this calf is born, I will then take DNA through uh, taking its tail hairs. We send that down to South Africa. There's a company down there that does it. Every animal on this farm is already DNA recorded in South Africa. And then they will come back to me and say, 100% correct, this is the correct father. Or they might come back to me and say, no, no, is it possible that this bull is the father? And if that bull happened to be on the farm, because his records are also with, with that company, maybe last night the bull got in to the cows and covered the cow 12 hours ago. We don't know 100% what happens on our farms when we're not there all the time. So we safeguard against that and we, we try and keep meticulous records. That is the difference between stud breeding and commercial breeding, is the record keeping. That was yet another exciting episode of the show, The Farmer's Diary. We have learned a lot from Mr. Reed. We saw him artificially inseminating his cattle. We saw him taking us through the steps of how you can actually benefit from artificial insemination as a general farmer who wants to improve the quality of their breed. My name is Tanyara Zomchizo and from the crew behind the scenes, do follow our social media handles, like, subscribe to this video and share with your fellow farmers so that we can all learn from Mr. Reed and we can all get the best breed right here in Zimbabwe.